Hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to take a look at this white MacBook. This is of course the classic polycarbonate non-unibody MacBook. This is a mid-2007 model or MacBook 2, 1. Equipped with a uh, Socket M Core 2 Duo CPU, clocked at 2 GHz. Um, it originally came with 1 GB memory uh, and a 60 GB hard drive or 80 GB in this one. Um, so a pretty basic model overall, has Intel integrated graphics and all that stuff. What's special about this one though is, uh, first of all, I only paid uh, 40 euros for this, including an original Mac safe, the uh, L model actually, so that was a later model. And um, this machine seems to be sort of refurbished, at least has been refurbished somewhere in 2008, late 2008, somewhere around uh, September, October. So. Uh, what I can work out from at least from the parts that are in it is uh, they at least replaced the hard drive and the memory uh, and probably the top case as well. It's in pretty good condition. I mean, if we take a look at this machine, I mean, the top, of course, is scratched to hell. That's normal for these. I mean, you can see these rings here. That's probably some kind of marker or something or eraser. I can probably buff that out a little bit. It's not too bad, really. And the bottom is pretty much similar story, just some normal usage scratching that uh, these machines are known for. Um, there's no battery in it, as you can tell, and there's also no L bracket here to, for the memory and the uh, to keep the battery in place. I do have a new battery for it, which works fine, but uh, yeah, we're not going to be using that for a bit. So let's just take a little bit of a tour around the machine, so you can uh, get a better look. In the front we have the sleep light the infrared sensor, optical drive, this is a combo unit, so uh, it reads DVDs and writes CDs. On the back nothing but vents and stuff like that. And uh, this is where all the meat and potatoes are. We have the MagSafe power connector, Gigabit Ethernet, which is powered by a Marvell Yukon chipset. We have the mini DVI port, Firewire 400, two USB 2.0 ports, line in and a line out. Kensington lock and a bunch of screws, which are really nice. And of course, the front has a magnetic latch, which is very tough on these. I mean, there's no surprise that uh, they usually crack. I'll just uh, get a look on that and see. This part has cracked, in fact. Um, it was like this when I got it. Um, this side over here, you can feel that it might crack somewhere in the future, but it's not quite there yet. So. So that's, that's actually pretty good. So the top case is in good-ish condition. Keyboard is in good condition. The trackpad is very nice. Feels very smooth. No real rough patches or anything from where it's been worn. Display is in good condition. Backlight is still pretty bright. Of course, it's only CCFL backlight, so it's uh, it will lose some brightness over time. And uh, this machine being nine years old, there's no surprise that uh, it has lost some over the years. Of course, it also has a webcam and all that good stuff. So yeah, that pretty much concludes the outside tour. So the next step, of course, is to turn it on and take a look. But before we do that, <clears throat> there's just one last thing that I want to show. I upgraded the memory. There's now three gigabytes in here. Originally came with one one gigabyte module instead of the original two 512s that it would have come from the factory. So that's probably been done through the refurbishment. And right here is an SSD, 120 gigabyte. Originally came in the 120 gigabyte drive when I got this, which is an original Apple drive from 2008. And uh, the memory module, the one gig, was also from 2008, pretty much the same time. So that really makes me, or leads me to believe that this was refurbished uh, at that point. So yeah, so we've got a pretty speedy machine from 2007, at least we hope. And uh, I will try to uh, point that out. Uh, let's do it to some battery power, shall we? I'll just uh, put the battery in and uh, get cracking. Just need to get it in properly. The annoying thing is that because I don't have an L bracket, those things from the memory compartment always stick out. That's really annoying. If you want to get the battery in there, which I might not be able to do right now. It won't actually snap in because of that. 
Okay. Let's see if she boots. She does. It's a glossy display, so I'm just waiting for it to boot up so it can turn up the brightness a bit. So bear with me for a little bit. Okay. Let me just log in real quick. Okay. Turn up the brightness a bit. And there we go. And there we are. Let's see, that's. Yeah, that angle will do. That will do. We are running Mac OS X version 10.8.5, which is Mountain Lion. Trying to zoom in here a little bit so you can see that. There you can see. It says right here, mid 2007, 2 gigahertz core to do, 3 gigabytes of DDR2. GMA 950-1085. So this is in fact running Mountain Lion. I used the uh, Mac Post Vector method to uh, update this. I had to uh, put in this bigger SSD. I had a 30 gig SSD at first to uh, install Mountain Lion on. But uh, the problem with that was, uh, quite frankly, that uh, I couldn't fit the installation on there. Because with Mac Post Vector, uh, in many cases, you can't really do that from USB. It's very annoying. It simply won't let you do that. So, I mean, in my case, it would just uh, kernel panic every time I tried to boot from the installation USB that I made with Mac Post Vector. And uh, when I put once I put it on an internal partition instead and booted that and, inst and installed just fine. So I don't know what went wrong there, but uh, it's working now. On his 120 gigabyte uh, Intenso SSD, <laughs> super generic stuff. But uh... so yeah, my partition is now pretty fucked because I used to have Lion on here. And, uh, what I'm probably gonna do is restore the Macintosh SSD partition to the Data partition, then delete Macintosh SSD altogether and uh, merge it with Data again. That way, I don't have to reinstall the operating system, and it'll only take about uh, 15 minutes or so. So that's neat. One thing, though, you might be wondering about is why would you put an SSD in a laptop that only has SATA revision 1? Well, because it's blazing fast, as you can see. I mean, that was Microsoft Word opening in just a matter of seconds. Um, <laughs> Office 2016 uh, on my uh, MacBook Pro Retina with the uh, PCI Express SSD won't even open Word 2016 that fast. So, that was a weird sentence. Anyway, it's, it's just a pretty fast machine. I mean, Chrome loads up just like two, three seconds. Safari, same story. It's just really blazing fast. In fact, let's do a speed test on camera here. Um, for that, I will need to get... Uh... Ah, crap, really? All right, all right. I guess I'll have to log in with my Apple ID. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, we're good to go. Let's open up Blackmagic speed test. Because it is only SATA revision 1, we should only be seeing speeds of up to 150 megabytes per second. And it crashed. What? Well, that's weird. Apparently, it doesn't work on Mountain Lion. Huh. Well, that's a shame. Well, I guess we can't really test it then. Oh well. There goes that plan. I have no interest in uh, finding any other app that will do the same, so... We'll just leave that as is. So, yeah. By the way, one thing that really surprised me on this machine was... Um, that it ha actually has dual-band wireless and 300 megabit connection. Um, I mean, we can just take a look at that. I don't know if you can see that. 
which is zoomed in a little bit. But uh, right here it says we're on channel 40, 44, 5 gigahertz. And the uh, transmit speed, whoops, got a notification on my screen here. Uh, the speed here is uh, 300, 300 megabit wireless N on a mid 2007 MacBook. Uh, that, that doesn't seem right to me in, because these machines should be equipped with wireless G still. It is dual band, so wireless A, B, G. But uh, this machine seems to have dual band N, and it's that's just it's, uh, that was really weird to me. I mean, I had a Mac Mini mid 2007, which has the same hardware as this. It only had a slightly slower CPU, but it only had a wireless G. And if you look at every Mac, um, these machines are also equipped with uh, wireless G. If I'm not mistaken, just take a look at this MacBook 2, comma one. Really, these are also upgradable to a 2.1 gigahertz. Uh, let's see. There we go. The white 07. One gigabyte of DDR2. Yeah. GMA950, sudden motion sensor, 80 gig hard drive, so I was right about that. And where does it say something about the wireless? Let's see. Standard airport. Oh, it actually does ABGN. Okay. Well, that's interesting because what I could find was that these machines should use G, especially because the Mac Minis used to, and that was weird, so. Well, I guess it's normal then, and it's been pretty much three minutes of wasted time. Um, well, that's that then. By the way, something that I want to address here is for people that are running older Macs like this, that uh, pretty much max out at Lion, um, as long as you have a 64-bit processor, which is required for Lion itself anyway, um, at least for mo if you want to run it natively, not without uh, modding anything, then uh, definitely give Mountain Lion a try. Mountain Lion generally runs better than Lion does, and uh, especially if you have an SSD, well, low capacity SSDs are pretty cheap these days, so definitely grab one of those, and uh, you'll have a flying machine. I mean, you can definitely tell this is a, this machine is nine years old, but as you can see, it navigates through this operating system that came out uh, five years after this machine came out and it's absolutely blazing fast. I haven't run into any problems or hiccups on this machine under Mountain Lion at all. The only thing to note though is early Macs like this use the Intel 945 chipset so you will be limited to three gigabytes of RAM. You can fit four, it will recognize you have four but it can only use three. It's I believe this is due to the fact that the uh, there's a memory bus on the uh, 945 chipset is inadequate. It's like I think it's 32-bit uh, data paths only, so that probably has to do something with it. As we all know, 32-bit architecture is limited to uh, address spaces up to four gigabytes. But yeah, just keep clicking things because this thing is so darn fast. Even a very very taxing app like uh, iPhoto just loads up just fine with my photo library from iCloud. And it's just a very nice machine overall to use. I think this is perfectly fine for someone who just wants to do word processing and the internet. This is pretty much perfect. These machines are durable, they're reliable, and there's just absolutely no real reason to hate them, especially if you can find some, uh, find one that's in decent condition like this one. The only thing I just need to take care of is to maybe get the lid cleaned up a little bit more. Uh, maybe buff out some scratches if I can, and uh, then this thing will be perfect. It'll be good to go. So I hope you all enjoyed this video on my mid 2007 MacBook. Um, if you have any suggestions on what I should do with this laptop, feel free to ask, and uh, I will take a look at what I can do. These machines are very versatile in terms of operating systems. You can run anything from Windows XP uh, up to Windows 10, and uh, OS 10 Tiger up to Mountain Lion, so, and of course Linux. So that's all very fun. Hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.